Hello, this is Mark Wayshack, and I'm America's sales coach on game plan selling. And today we're going to be talking about a topic that when I work with large organizations or, or even business owners that have a sales team, one of the questions that I consistently have been getting recently is, Mark, how do I manage more effectively my younger salespeople? So whether you have a company that has a sales team that's almost entirely young, so you could be in software, you could be in publishing, you could be in a bunch of the industries that might attract younger salespeople. On the other hand, maybe you just have one or two, or maybe just one salespeople who is on the younger side. And by younger, I mean basically 30 and younger. And uh, let me just break it down a little bit for you. I'm not going to talk about the older generations because I think we're, we're, we, we have a clearer understanding of, of what that means. But when I talk about 30 and younger, this fits into a, a category called the millennial generation or known as Generation Y. And basically that means people that were born uh, 1983 or more recently. And what I found is that you have a a different set of character traits with this generation when it comes to managing them as salespeople. And, and I just want to separate two quick things. One is is that you always want to take into account that there are there are certain traits that actually make these people distinct because of the time period that they were born in. The other thing to remember is that sometimes they're just different in terms of how you manage them because of their age and eventually as they get older they will act more like the people that you have managed that are of the older generation so you have really two different factors going on right now the first tip here is that I you never want to expect what has worked in the past from a management perspective with your older generations the people that are that you've managed that are older you don't want to expect those same strategies to work with uh, these younger salespeople, the people that you are dealing with today, because a lot is different. First of all, this generation has been a generally coddled and highly supported generation because these are the kids of the baby boomers. And so these are people that have uh, grown up where everyone got a trophy. They were very high expectations of what they had. So there's probably actually a pretty good chance that when they were younger, they did not have an expectation to get into sales. So you just want to remember that uh, whereas maybe older generations, the, the job that you might have been might be offering would have been the absolute greatest thing that, that someone who's 50 years old right now, when they were younger, that they could have ever gotten. Chances are people who are 30 or younger, this may not have been their first choice for a job option. And as a result, it requires a different way of approaching how you manage them. What motivates them, what drives them is very, very different. The first, the, the, the first real tangible thing here is that we want to tie their personal goals to their professional goals. So when you're dealing with a younger salesperson who might be of this generation, you actually want to get to know what they want to accomplish personally. And this is really true for, for people of any generation. That's just that's just good management. And I don't think you I don't think you have to get to know them on an incredibly personal level because I think there's there's something to be said for keeping work life boundaries. But to have a clear idea of what they would like to accomplish personally in terms of what do they want to be buying? What do they want to be investing in? What do they want to be doing with their time outside of work? Getting an idea of that is really powerful. And remember that this generation does not necessarily have their, their ideal goal is not to accomplish this, which is the white picket fence with the family. Now, maybe they do want a family, but you know what? Maybe they don't. And that is very typical for this generation. You know, for them, personal goals are very likely to be a lot of traveling, are going to be uh, paying off student debt, which it may not be exciting, but it's certainly motivating because, you know, the, the typical person of this generation, uh, particularly of this socioeconomic bracket of the people that you'd be hiring, they're likely to have between twenty and $80,000 in student debt. And that's going to be hanging over their head. And that's not something that's uh, maybe an exciting ambition to pay off, but it is certainly something that will be really important for them.
So every goal that they have professionally should tie back to how that will support them personally. So if you want to get them to make, uh, to sell, let's say a million dollars in whatever it is that you sell, and let's just for a second, just pretend that they're on 10% commission. So that means that, uh, and no base salary. So, so if it were 10% commission, that means that they would be earning $100,000. I want to, as the manager, you don't have to know exactly, but to have a clear idea of where does that $100,000 go? You know, is it that they want to pay for that trip? Do they want to, uh, which will cost them $5,000 above and beyond their cost of living? Uh, do they want to put $20,000 or $10,000 towards their student debt? Do they have to, you know, what's their cost of living right now? What's their nut? They're between their, uh, in, in most cases, this generation, people are renting. So what's their rent? What is, you know, uh, maybe they want to buy a house, whatever that is, get a clear idea of how these professional goals tie to their personal goals. Once you do that, it is much, much easier to motivate them because now every time they pick up the phone, that is getting them that much closer to whatever it is that they would like to accomplish outside of their uh, professional life and whatever it is they want to accomplish in their personal life. The next thing is to focus on when managing this younger generation, to focus on activities and not numbers. Let me give you a sports analogy. I'm, I, I use a lot of sports analogies. If you were a coach, right, and you were coaching a, a football team, it's hard to really do a lot of serious coaching on game day. But what you can really control is how they're training. What are they doing on a day-to-day -day basis to train to get themselves ready, ultimately, for game day? Okay, because, you know, you can make a few adjustments here and there on game day, but what you really want to control are the day-to-day -day activities that get them uh, to the place where they're ready for game day. So let me be specific with sales now. Uh, a lot of managers are very, almost 100% focused on did you hit your sales numbers this month? Did you bring in $100,000 or did you bring in your $30,000? And that's, that's fine, but we also want to augment that with focusing on what are those key activities that they have to do in order to actually hit that. So what I find is that a lot of times it means that, let's say, um, the goal would be, uh, you know, they basically have to go on, let's say, 10 meetings a month in order to likely hit that $100,000 $100, sales goal. Let's just say that with a number. Now, what activities do they have to do to get those 10 meetings a month? How many calls do they have to make? How many introductions do they have to ask for? How many client calls? How many whatever it is, those key metrics that you use, how many of those do they have to hit in order to hit that number? And hold them accountable to those activities more specifically than just the ultimate sales number, particularly in the first six months to year of managing them. Get them used to focusing on activities. This is a generation that's not as disciplined as other generations. So you need to get them almost trained into thinking more disciplined. The last piece, this is really a bonus, is that you want to communicate very, very regularly. I mean all the time. This is a generation that is used to getting a lot of feedback, um, whether it was in school, from parents, in sports. Give them feedback, either positive or negative. Never both at the same time, by the way. So if you if you have if something if they've done something well, let them know. If they've done something that needs to be fixed, let them know. Now, if they've done both, save the, the feedback, the good feedback for one meeting and the bad feedback for another meeting. Never say, oh, you know, you did a great job here, but let me tell you what you did wrong here, you know, because then that really negates any of the positiveness. So always keep that feedback separately, but give them lots of feedback, make lots of communication with them. In fact, what I recommend, particularly early on when you're working with someone this age, is to have a regular meeting. It can be short. It can be a five or 10 minute meeting once a week or every two weeks that's scheduled on the books here on out. And so that way you're constantly giving them feedback. You're constantly getting their questions because they're going to have, of course, a lot of questions. Be communicating very regularly. So I hope this was helpful. What I want to just give you for having watched this whole video 
is uh, my ebook on how to connect with any prospect to close more sales. I think this will be some content that will be specifically relevant for younger salespeople. In fact, I have a whole section where I talk about how younger salespeople should be dressing, um, what they should do when they're dealing with maybe a, a prospect that's a little older than them. So I think this could be a really great bonus that once you download it, you can send it to the people on your team. All you have to do is go to the website gameplanselling.com fill in your information and it will get emailed to you instantly. Again, my name is Mark Wayshack. I'm so glad that you were here. I hope this was helpful. Um, can't wait to talk to you soon. Thanks.